Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the match reaction for Chelsea 4, Man United 3. Yes, you heard that one right. A hat-trick for Cole Palmer. Two goals coming in 90, well, 100th and 101st minute or something along those lines. Um, we thought we were dead and buried and then we came back from the dead to get the three points. Stamford Bridge rocking. I haven't heard it rocking like that for a while. Absolute limbs everywhere. Um, and that you could say deserved. I think the stats would show that we deserved it, but ultimately, you know, you sort of feel like we kind of got away with one there. Um, but yeah, guys, make sure you're smashing the likes. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And as always, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And yeah, you know, heading into the game, I wasn't feeling too confident. We hadn't beaten Man United in the league since 2017. We were coming off the back of a really poor performance against Burnley where we dropped points. Um, United playing shocking themselves, but somehow seem to pull something out of the bag uh, whenever they play against us. You know, we can't seem to, to get over the line for whatever reason. And Potter went with the same, the same team. Um, I thought there could have maybe been a few changes given how disappointing we were at the weekend. But I think it was also sending a message to those guys, again, that, you know what, you need to go out there and do the business and, and, and put things right for what happened at the weekend. And do you know what? We actually started the game really well. You know, we get we go a goal up pretty early on through Conor Gallagher, I think, in the first five minutes. You know, it, it's a nice move. You could argue that Anana should probably do better. But, you know, we're one up. You think it's a good start. Let's just play ourselves into the game. Let's, you know, allow our football to do the talking. Don't let it turn into a basketball match or or anything like that. I mean, then get this, we then get the second, um, you know, Cucurella bursting into the box. It is a foul by Anthony. Yes, you could say that both penalties in, in, in truth were probably a little bit soft, but you know, I'm not having any sympathy for Man United fans about refereeing decisions. They've been getting away with this shit for years, getting soft penalties and not having penalties given against them that are blatant penalties. So they can absolutely hold that. Um, no sympathy there with them whatsoever. And Palmer steps up and you're tuning up and you're thinking, "Raw, wow, we're in dreamland here. Absolute dreamland. But then you get to, you know, you sort of thinking, right, okay, let's control this game. Let's, you know, let's see this half out. and. Once again, we proceed to be our worst, our own worst enemies. Um, you know, Caicedo, I, I don't know what he was doing, but, you know, a horrendous pass that puts Garnacho in, he's through on goal. And obviously, you know, he puts it past Petrovic with a good finish. Um, you know, I mean, look, I'll be brutally honest. I didn't think Caicedo was that good last night, to be fair. I mean, after the game, I was a bit hot-headed. I did describe him as Lee, like Lee Mack in soccer aid. Um, that might have been a, a little bit harsh. But the reality is that Enzo was a lot better once Caicedo went off. And I'll get into that point a little bit later on. But Enzo and Caicedo have cost us too many games this season. You know, they need a massive kick up the arse and just, just better coaching uh, in general. But it was a really poor mistake from from Caicedo himself and that completely changes the momentum of the game um you know it allows Man United to, to come back into it have some confidence when they'd really offered pretty much absolutely nothing um and then I, I don't know what goes on at the training grounds but the equalizer we let in was pathetic you know we've got six players in our in in our box with two United players and yet somehow both players are unmarked at the back stick. It's a good ball into the box by, I think, Delo. Hoyland leaves it and Fernandez is there with a free header at the back stick. You've got Cucurella in the fucking in the fucking right back position when he's playing left back. No one's picking up anything. Defensively, we don't seem to be knowing what we're doing at all. And it's 2-2. And it it was a half that epitomized what Chelsea is right now. You know, self-destruct, mentality of the team is so fragile. And the coaching, especially defensively, is so questionable. Um, you know, what I would say is that it's not Pochettino's fault for those mistakes in the last 15 minutes of the first half. It's not his fault that Caicedo fucked it up. It's not his fault that, you know, we couldn't do basic marking in the box despite having six versus two in our favour. But where he does deserve blame is this basketball type mentality we had until United got their third goal through Garnacho. You know, you've just done a team talk for fuck's sake. What are we doing? You know, he, he did redeem himself uh, with, with the substitutions. Yes, you know, I felt they were probably a bit late, you know, wait until we go 3-2 down to then to them bring, bring the players on. But I mean, it was just crazy. Absolutely crazy. But, you know, 
the win did look absolutely delighted we've won, by the way. And obviously I've slept on it and, you know, the emotions drained out a little bit. But in the reality, what I've banged on about for a number of weeks now, months, is that what we're doing is not sustainable. There is zero defensive structure. There is zero midfield structure. And we are just freestyling an attack, waiting for Cole Palmer to do something. Like, that is not a way to be operating as a football team. That does need to change. That needs to change. I don't know how we change it, but that absolutely needs to change. Some Just some of the defending is so bad. And, you know, it's an indictment on the recruitment. You know, we've basically somehow ended up with Monaco centre-back pairing from the 22-23 season. I mean, is that is that re- is that upgrading? You know, we got rid of Mark. Well, we got rid of Mark Gehi. We got rid of Fakayo Tomori, and we've ended up with the Monaco centre backs from the twenty two twenty three season. Uh, uh, is that is that what we should be doing? Is that the right route to have gone down? Um, I, I I really don't know, but that's indicative of you know the, some poor recruitment in my opinion. I think Badia Shield's a good player. He showed it last season. He's obviously been out for a long time, and he struggled to find his rhythm and. He just looks like he's got a mistake in him all the time. I mean, I, I didn't know, I didn't really understand what Pochettino was doing when he made two changes to Sassi off and Gusto off for Gilchrist and, and Chalaba when we when we were chasing the game. I didn't quite understand what that was. I could understand perhaps the the Gusto one, you know, maybe just managing his minutes slightly. But when you're chasing the game and you need a goal, I, I maybe would have left him on. But I mean, unless the Sassi was injured, like I'm not really sure why he was replaced. I mean, Badia Shil, in my opinion, was having. Uh, a far worse game than him. But ultimately, once again, we are bailed out by Cole Palmer. We are Cole Palmer FC and there is absolutely no getting away from it. No getting away from it whatsoever. I mean, what he is doing right now is utterly exceptional. I think he's averaging a goal or an assist every 89 minutes. Um, His corners from the penalty spot is is something else. Um, The guy doesn't seem to be phased, doesn't seem to... Um, you know, be faced by by pressure or anything like that. And he's now just two goals behind Erling Haaland um, in in the race for the golden boot, which is quite something, you know, 18 for Haaland. And then he's level with Watkins, Salah and Solanke on 16 goals. So someone that is playing his first game, first season, sorry, playing regular football, he's playing in a team that are struggling, not playing well, mid-table, and what he's doing, in my opinion, is not getting enough credit because the team is doing so badly. If we were sort of in and around the top five, he'd be getting a lot more credit for what he's doing. But because the team's struggling, he's not getting the credit he deserves for what he's doing this season. He is doing what Edin Hazard used to do for us in seasons gone by, where the team's not good, but he just pulls us through matches through his own individual brilliance and his, and his exceptional talent. And he's doing exactly the same, similar to under Maurizio Sarri that Hazard was doing. The only difference is, is that we are so shit defensively that a lot of his hard work is going unrewarded because we're dropping so many points because we cannot defend. Um, but Palmer, once again, exceptional, like the penalties. Um, and then great quick thinking from Enzo Fernandez for, for the winner to take a short corner. United sleeping. Palmer takes a couple of touches, has a shot. It goes in off, in off McTominay and everyone goes absolutely mental. Haven't seen Stamford Bridge like that for a long time. Absolutely rocking. Um, and yeah, that felt so good. Nothing better than beating United in Fergie time. It hits differently. Um, couldn't have done it against a better team to do it against. You know, I cannot stand them smug. Um, that's what they've been doing to teams all season, playing horrendously and somehow getting away with it. And it is great to see them on the receiving end of that. And my God, did they deserve it. My God, did they deserve it. Um, and, you know, we somehow still have a chance of finishing sixth in a table. But do you know what? I, I wanted to just go back to my earlier point about Enzo and Caicedo costing us too many games uh, this season. What was really interesting is that as soon as Caicedo went off and he did rightfully go off because he wasn't he, he didn't he wasn't having a good game but i actually think i don't want to say the Enzo and Caicedo partnership doesn't work because it's not been given enough time but i i i'm wondering whether this needs a bit of a rethink because as soon as Caicedo went off and Enzo dropped deeper you know he became so much more fluid again so much more fluid again um, 
you know, him playing deeper, that's where that's where he plays. When Caicedo was off, Enzo dropped deep. We all saw the real Enzo Fernandez. That's where he should have been playing all season. That's where he should play from from now on. But I don't know if Pochettino is going to do that. You know, you've seen another example there, plays deeper and he comes to life. That's what he does. That's what he offers. Um, and for the rest of the season, in my opinion, Enzo has to play deep. Caicedo as a second six, but that defensive line needs to be closer to the midfield line. And we can definitely push for that sixth position. But Enzo was so much better when Caicedo went off and he dropped deeper. That That's the reality of the situation. But I mean, Jesus Christ, what a night. What a night. Um, you know, and look, people say we didn't deserve it. I, I said at the time, I think we've got, we're lucky with one. But if you actually look at the stats for the game, it's very hard to argue against how we didn't deserve that because 50 ball possession are kind of irrelevant. Um, expected XG 3.5 to 1.6, 28 shots to 19, 10 shots on target to their five. It's very hard to argue on those statistics that we didn't deserve um, that we didn't deserve the three points. We did. I know football's was not done on stats, but we there's, you can't say we didn't deserve to win that game because ultimately, I think I think we did. And I think it was a more than deserved victory in the end, even though we made such hard work of it. But a big concern is, is how easy we are to play through, how easy we are to hit on the transition, how easy we are to hit on the counter-attack, how poor we are defensively. Like these things cannot be ignored. By all means, I'm absolutely delighted we won. Enjoy it, celebrate it. But that can that that we can't allow this to paper over the cracks of what is what are fundamental structural issues in this team that have been there for a long time now and we're not going to keep we're not going to outscore teams every game if you're having to score three or four goals to win a game every time it's just not going to happen if you're conceding an average of two goals per game which we have done now over 50 goals conceded this season like you're not going to win many football matches we have to tighten up defense the attacking wise we we're, we're good you know Yes, it, most of it's down to Cole Palmer, but they're good attacking-wise. Medawake made a big difference when he came on, that directness, that one-on-one -on -one dribbling. Only thing I didn't like from him was why he was trying to take the penalty off Palmer. Um, and that's where we lack leadership and authority on and off the pitch. All that can be dealt with by having a designated penalty taker and just saying Palmer's the taker. Thank God we had the likes of Enzo on the pitch to, to, you know, to usher Medawake away. Um, you know, and yeah, he was annoyed about it, but Palmer's the taker. It's as simple as that. I like, you shouldn't be wanting the penalty when you know who the penalty taker is. The only time you should switch the penalty taker is if they've missed a, a few and they're taken off duty, or if you're three or four up in a game, you hand it over to someone else to kind of boost their confidence, give them a chance to get on the score sheet. But that, once again, is indicative of a lack of leadership and authority, both on and off the pitch. But this was massive for Pochettino. You could see with his emotion at the end. Um, I don't know if it's enough to save him or whatever, but you know, it almost felt like what Dortmund was last season for Potter. This feels like Pochettino's uh, Dortmund. But whether we can push on and, and finish the season strongly is is is, a, is, a, is, a, is another question. You know, you just don't know what you're going to get from this team. Sheffield United on Sunday. Uh, then we play Everton. Um, and then it's a tough run. City in the FA Cup semi-final. Arsenal, Villa are both away. You know, so let's wait and see what happens. We're by no means out the woods, but that was an absolutely vital win last night. Crazy, crazy game. Um, but yeah, guys, smash the likes. That's just my thoughts on the game. Subscribe if you're new around here. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Up the shelves. Catch you again in another one soon. And peace out.